Hi, my loves. Welcome back to the Stars Cartel channel. If you don't know, I am Star. I am here with a dream, okay? So, in this dream, which I didn't take notes on this dream, y'all. So, I'm, like, deliberately going off of memory. And, um, I'm just going to assume that any pieces that I don't remember, God don't intend for me to share, okay? So, in this dream... I am, um, it's like, it's about a relationship. I was in a relationship with someone and it seems as though this relationship was perfect. Okay. However, I was feeling like very smothered in this relationship. It was kind of like the person I was in a relationship with, um, they were, Everything was on me. I was doing everything. I was working. I was paying for everything. I was, you know, bending over backwards for this relationship. And this person, it's kind of like they were just there. And that's it. Like, they were literally just there. Then on top of me having to deal with paying for everything, working hard, I'll be putting all the love and energy and, you know, cleaning, cooking, all of these things. I also had to deal with, there was a group of women that kept on attacking me and harassing me and making, like, they basically were trying to compete with me for this man. I'm already doing all of this. You know, like, the relationship is already basically on my shoulders. And then on top of the relationship being on my shoulders, I also have to deal with women trying to, you know, threaten the relationship. So, basically, I end up leaving. You know, I, I and it, it wasn't even like a, um, it wasn't a situation where I left and, um, I sat and I gave a big speech or I made a big scene. I literally just left. Like, I was going somewhere and I did not come back. And the man was sitting there and, you know, a sad song was playing. I don't remember what song it was. It was a sad, it was a, um, one of them songs where, you know, it's like, come back and I miss you and I love you, something like that. Heavenly Father, please give us a scripture to go with this dream. The scripture comes from Proverbs 31 and 10. A wife of noble character, who can find? She is worth far more than rubies. Her husband has full confidence in her and lacks nothing of value. She brings him good, not harm, all the days of her life. She selects wool and flax and works with eager hands. She is like merchants, the merchant ships. Bringing her food from afar, she gets up while it is still night. She provides food for her family and portions for her female servants. She considers a field and buys it. Out of her earnings, she plants a vineyard. She sets about her work vigorously. Her arms are strong for her task. She sees that her trading is profitable and her lamp does not go out at night. In her hand, she holds the distaff and grasps the spindle with her fingers. She opens her arms to the poor and extends her hands to the needy. When it snows, she has no fear for her household, for all of them are clothed in scarlet. She makes coverings for her bed. She is clothed in fine linen and purple. Her husband is respected at the city gate, where he takes his seat among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them, and supplies the merchants with sashes. She is clothed with strength and dignity. She can laugh at the days to come. She speaks with wisdom and faithful instruction is on her tongue. She watches over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children arise and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Honor her for all that her hands have done and let her works bring her praise at the city gates. So here's what God is saying about this his dream and this his message. A woman that is 
of Proverbs 31 woman. There is no need, no reason for this woman to feel as though she is in still in this race, the rat race, which is, you know, of single women that are looking for a spouse. She is not, I'm sorry, y'all, this little bag, I put this bag up here, my baby got the sniffles, and it's for his tissues, and it's just bothering me. Anyways, there is no reason, <laughs> that's funny, that's part of the message, there is no reason for a woman that's doing all this right here to be stressed out already because she's doing all this right here, but she's not tripping about that because that's what she do. And then on top of that, have to deal with her man not only is he inadequate because he was just sitting there staring at me but also he has the audacity to have a gang of women when i said audacity it was five 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 confirmation y'all but the audacity to have a gang of women that think they can compete with me they think they got something on me god said your husband, they always screaming and hollering and jumping up and down about the rest of the scripture, but they always ignore this part at the bottom. Honor her for all that her hands have done and let her works bring her praise at the city gate. Instead of this man going about and letting it be known, I'm married. You can't come toe to toe with my wife. I'm married. You ain't got nothing on my wife. I'm married. Ain't nothing that you can do for me that she can't do for me. He is making it seem as though there's a possibility that one of these women could possibly hold a candle to you. It's nonsense. It's foolery. This man is basically, he begged God for a wife. He begged God for a, a Proverbs 31 wife. God sent him a wife. God sent him a Proverbs 31 wife. And he had the audacity. Okay, it's blasphemy what he's doing. I Like God is saying, blasphemy. Bla it is blasphemy what he is doing. Because he has his perfect wife. Yet he has the audacity to go about to other women and make them believe that they could possibly hold a candle to the woman that God created for him. This is preposterous. This is nonsense. I just feel like for somebody perfect, like perfect, and nobody is perfect, but you were, in fact, exactly what this person asked for. And they had the audacity, the nerve, the kahunas to go about and fix their mouth to say that there was something wrong with you. They had the audacity to even allow these women to think there was a possibility that they could hold a candle to you. And you realize your worth and how wonderful you were. And how amazing you were. And everything that you did in order to, you know, be exactly what this man needed you to be. And who God called you to be. And you were tired, but you kept it pushing. You had complaints. You had grievances. But you didn't go around complaining to people about your husband. You made sure everybody knew that you loved your husband. You didn't go around to people and telling them all these negative, nasty things. You said good things while he was going behind your back and talking noise about you. Talking down on you. He wanted you to feel, this is a man, he wanted you to feel as though there was a possibility that somebody else could swoop in and take you. And take him. I didn't even mean to say that. So in reality what he was thinking. Is that somebody would swoop in and take you. So he wanted you to feel. Like there were people. Like it was. He was a big uh, calamity. He was. You know. He, he's big. Everybody want him. Everybody want him. And you, you better be careful because you never know. Another woman might come and take him. Another woman might come and snatch him. Another woman might come and do this. The women, big-headed, they were trying to fight you. 
trying to argue with you, wanting to compete with you, trying to get all dressed up just so they can walk past your house about your husband. God said he is seeking judgment upon this man and these women. Emphasis on the man. Emphasis on this man. This man, instead of putting energy into trying to make his wife jealous of women that are not his wife, women that don't belong to him, and apparently he didn't want them because if he did, he would be with them. He could have put energy into loving his wife energy into taking care of his wife and just like the scripture says honor her for all that her hands have done and let her works bring her praise at the city gate instead of people praising her for being a good wife instead of people telling her how wonderful she is how beautiful she is it's beautiful what she's doing she was receiving bad looks nasty looks people were uh, talking about her Women felt as though they could compete with her for her man. They felt as though there was a possibility that they could have her man. God told you, leave. Leave him. Leave him. Since he wants the crowd and he want to go about and uh, sow his royal oats, with all these random women and get their heads all big and make them believe that there's a possibility that they can hold a candle to you, let him go. And you should be with a man that will honor you, that will love you, that will treat you the way that you deserve to be treated because you do not deserve to be treated as though you are an accessory that can easily be swapped out. You're not a purse. You're not shoes. And now this man is in mourning. His heart is filled with sadness because of what he did to his wife, says the Lord. He is sitting around singing sad songs. The song don't even matter. And like I said, anything that I'm not able to exactly like remember, I feel like God has said, it don't matter. The song don't even matter. It don't matter what song he's singing. He's singing sad songs. He's in mourning. He's moping around. He's angry. He's upset because all those women that he was trying to make you feel like were a threat to you. All these women that he was trying to make you feel like they could take your spot and they could they could work your spot better than you could work your spot failed him. Half of them are so childish. They don't even want him. They just wanted to compete with you and mess with you. But now that you don't want him, now they don't want him. And the other half that really did want him he may have tried to fill them. Sure, he tried to put them in your spot and they ain't hold a candle to you. They may have been able to do one or two things, maybe three or four, but they don't hold a candle to you. God says he is under judgment. He is under the wrath of God. For the mere thought, the audacity, for him to think that it was okay for him to pray to God for a wife, God send him a wife and him to feel like as a married man, he's still going to play the field like he's single and he's going to make his wife believe that she should be in competition with these other women. Please. There's no reason. The game is over. The, the arena is closed. Once you get married, ain't no more competition. It shouldn't be no competition. That's why adultery is a sin. The competition is over. You already won. You won already. They look silly. 
This is like somebody doing, they racing a marathon. You won already. You got your trophy. You took your pictures. The balloons went up in the sky. Everybody went home. And here they are coming back to the stadium saying, no, 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 no. That's not right. Something didn't, uh -uh, uh -uh, uh -uh. I was supposed to win. They replay everything back. They check everything. They say, oh, no, she didn't break no rules. She won. Fair and square. She won. And they, no, 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 I won, I won, I won. So they go, they go to the dollar store, they find them a little trophy, and they want to, you know, write their name on the trophy and say, no, look, 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 I won, I won. No, it's me, it's me, it's me, it's me, it's me. Ain't nobody got time for that. Bye. Ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody honoring that nonsense. Ain't nobody dealing with that mess. You won. Fair and square. The competition is over. The door to the stadium is locked. Everybody then went home. Ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody buying tickets for no uh no fake game. <laughs> Baby, God said this man is under judgment. Because he thought. He thought. He thought. He thought, he thought some of these women were really bigging his head up, making him really think he was a hot commodity. He ain't even take out the time to realize they were trying to compete with you. He didn't take out the time to realize that they were messing with you. And I just feel like whoever you are in this dream, I was so, I felt like so much pressure. You were under pressure. You are already under pressure just doing your regular duties, let alone having to deal with these women harassing you. And this man, good for nothing man, that didn't even take out the time and let these women know they better not disrespect you and they better find somewhere else to go. Protect her. Nowhere to be found. Nowhere to be found. He evaporated. Nowhere to be found. We don't know where to find. We don't know what to do. Now he's singing sad songs. He got his harmonica out. He got the piano out. Okay, he got his grand piano. And he's singing his sad songs and playing the keys. Because he can't believe that his wife left. And he don't understand why his wife left. And he don't know why she would do him this way. And he can't figure out what he did wrong. And he's sitting up here crying to the same women that were harassing you. And he's just it's sad. He, we got to get him a fiddle. We got to get it. What's that? Uh, I forgot what it's called. Uh, um, oh, man. A violin. We got to get him a violin together. We got to get. He could play his own grand orchestra right now. Because he don't understand what happened. And he can't figure out what's going on. God says he is letting this man know right now. He thought the competition was still going. But it was over. He thought that it was still. But it was it was done. Hey, the competition is done. It's finished. Ain't no more competition. You already got the award. Everybody already went home. Y'all celebrated and everything. And you know, for those of you that don't understand the analogy, I'm going to break it down. See, the competition is when you are dating. When you are dating... It is a possibility that somebody else, you know, some people date multiple people until they figure out who they want to be with. Now, once you get married, this is the grand finality. This is when you win the race. You, you, you cross the finish line when you get married. That's it. The race is over. The race is finished. The marriage certificate, the rings, 
All right, like just in reality, you know, you being married, you got the trophy. You have won. Once the marriage, the covenant is created, you have the trophy. This is not a trophy that somebody can buy from somewhere. This is, I just feel like the, the you already won. The wedding celebration, the, the, the party that people typically throw after a wedding is like that's the celebrate. You celebrated already. Everything was done. This is somebody that was delusional into thinking that there's a possibility that they could go about and say, no, it was wrong. Something wasn't right and something wasn't. No, nah, they already lost. He ain't make no mistake when he married you instead of them. I don't, me personally, I wouldn't even want a man to disrespect me in such a way to make me believe that something didn't happen right or something wasn't right. I like, hey, that's what it is. He gonna marry who he want to marry. It wasn't no mistake. Ain't nobody had to sweet talk him or convince him or, you know, like, ain't no, and nah, nah. God said, wasn't no mistake made. Wasn't no confusion going on. That man married who he wanted to marry and he married you. God says that this man was adding so much strain, so much stress, so much drama. Because he had these women thinking that they could possibly be with you, would be with him. They could possibly compete with you. They could possibly. There is some kind of, the competition was over. And I can't stress that. Like, that's the message. The competition is over. The competition is finished. You already won. And they are delusional. And so you was like, you know what? I'm not doing this. And you left. You chunked him the deuce. You chunked them the deuce. You told them, you know what? You're right. Y'all win. And you left. Then they realize that technically he's still married to you. Baby, that's the message. Thank you guys for watching. Be sure. <laughs> they realize technically they in sin. And they're, they're in vain, but that God is not happy with them. They're under God's wrath. They're under God's judgment. This man realized that these women, that he was trying to make it seem like they could hold a candle to you, they could come toe to toe with you, and there's a possibility, this, there's a possibility that they can't come even close to what, That's the message. Thank you guys for watching. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe.